Now we're going to talk about something uh, that's kind of getting into the news slowly. It's uh, something that replaces kind of a lot of the medications, not related to the medi medications, it's kind of a synthesized uh, supplement or a peptide, uh, which is actually finding its way into the journals. I mean, people have even written about it. They've tried this out. Uh, but it hasn't reached a kind of commercial popularity. Uh, so it's a very complicated name. Okay, It's called Bremelinotide. Okay. Oh, no, I just, I'm telling you, these names always, uh, you know, they're always bouncers. Unless you repeat it about 100 times, you're not going to get it. But now it won't entirely regain your youth. Uh, it will regain a lot of the critical functions uh, which are associated with uh, with your with your circulatory system, um, with your nitrous oxide levels, uh, at a much better level because it actually kind of helps promote uh, a lot of the circulation in your in your body. Okay, and we're going to talk about this. Is this something that you could actually look at in the future? Is this something that will become commercially viable, or do we have to still hunt for it? So stay on and. Uh, we get ready for this. Okay, so you can see this little molecule out here. Uh, it's just the construction of what this peptide looks like. Now, it is also known as, because these are all tongue twisters, they call this PT141. Okay, and it's a peptide. Now, what is a peptide? Okay, a peptide is a subsection of an amino acid. It's the building blocks that make amino acids, and these amino acids make the proteins. Okay, now this particular peptide has been studied as early as the 1990s. Huh? If you don't, I mean, it's it's actually been uh, under a lot of study, and they've done tests, they've done uh, clinical tests uh, to see what is the uh, efficacy and what is the effect of this. So. Like many things, uh, it is not yet FDA approved. Okay, it may get there, uh, but as far as I know, it's not something that's going to get into the rat race and uh, come at the top of the list. But it shows results for circulation and heart health because as we get older, the linings of our blood vessels are the ones that create the nitrous oxide, and they start to wear out and they start to become weaker and weaker. And we also don't have the right kind of hormonal stimulation for us to get the nitrous oxide released in our body. And what does this nitrous oxide do? It helps dilate your vessels so that there is a much better blood flow. There are a lot of hundred other things that nitrous oxide does, but this is something which uh, is particularly related to heart problems. Okay. It is also known to be something effective for diabetes as well. So there's a lot of research and there's a lot of application that's gone into it. Now, for weak neurons, I mean, your brain works with your synaptic connections between your neurons, and sometimes they can weaken out. And a lot of it weakens out because, again, we have the flowing of the nitrous oxide in our body that might reduce. So this can tax certain neurons. They can become lazy or they may start to die out. Okay, So something like this actually starts to trigger uh, you know, the revival of this. So when I say it's a kind of a regain of youth. It's a lot of regain of youth internally. And uh, we definitely don't want to fall into or lean into an area where we're getting, you know, seen at. Okay, I mean, let's, uh, you know, we can, we can see what's happening on the news. We've got some very famous leader out there who's probably battling with it. And uh, it's embarrassing and it's not embarrassing. It's also, you know, you, you can't lead a very... Uh, you know, constructive, normal life that you used to, okay? You might start wandering around and stuff like that, okay? So, the only problem is that there is, for somebody to manufacture this and make it as a business, there is not money, much money for peptides, okay? Because it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a part of an amino acid, it's a string of amino acids, and, and they're kind of abundantly found and doesn't require a very rigorous manufacturing process, uh, you you know it's not something that you can really patent, so you can't have a monopoly on it. So, so it's not a very easily found. But uh, there have been uh, 
a couple of drugs around and you can see the names there vigovi ozempic uh typically you will find them in in the western world they are quite common there i don't know uh what are the equivalents available here but i'm sure they are around okay now they typically come in these forms they come as nasal sprays okay yeah it comes as a nasal spray it can come as a tablet and it also comes in a vial for as an injection so what you can do is you can actually where they administer it is actually on your tummy you know so that's the place where typically that injection is provided okay it is like what this pt141 does it's a melanocyte stimulating hormone okay and this uh stimulating hormone allows the brain to tell the body to start producing more nitrous oxide okay so definitely the body can produce nitrous oxide provided you have the right amount of amino acids going into your body okay so if you don't even if you're absolutely zero on protein um uh, and zero on uh, foods that contain nitrous oxide okay uh celery is one thing that has a lot of nitrous oxide so if you do get a chance to chew on uh, uh celery or if you're somebody who's very uh, happy with the bloody marys and eating the stock which is the celery you know that's where you'll get a lot of it but you can definitely check and in a lot of my previous videos there has been mention of uh, foods that contain the nitrous oxide so there are two parts one is having the raw material in your body and the other part is for you to get it stimulated now what has come as a and, and what it is opposing right now in the big limelight of the current situation for this pt141 is battling the blue pill and the pink pill which is uh, which has brought in a lot of money and while those are stimulating in a certain area uh then they're very focused this actually gives you overall health and this is one of the one of the uh, what you call side effects is that you know what the blue pill and pink pill can do this can also do okay but that's just one of the benefits and uh, people are actually uh, do act, actually take this and it's typically they take about 4 4 mg of this a day uh which is kind of very very tiny amount and uh, uh it kind of actually starts to cure a lot of things that come because of your blood vessels uh, narrowing down and because of not enough uh, circulation and not enough nitric oxide getting into your system it's kind of okay and this is not only applicable uh, not only men can use it women can also administer this they can take this so if you really wanting to go this way then you probably have to may want to talk to your doctor and say okay is this something i can take uh, you know you, you can partner with your doctor uh, but typically it's not an extremely dangerous thing unless you've taken it in you know some uh, uh, obnoxious amounts of quantity but uh, there are side effects if you know for some people you get you know nausea throwing up you might get uh, hot flushes sweating uh, lower back pain is is something that can happen and sometimes it does kind of alter your taste buds okay and that's kind of obvious because you've got a different kind of a circulation happening and different kind of hormone getting released so there might be a slight you know your food might taste slightly different okay so uh, those are typically the side effects but uh, you can actually go and uh, you know you won't get this on any uh, uh, regular online pharmacy because it's really not it's not so easy to find you might find it on india mart uh, for example in india they actually have people laboratories that actually make this and uh, they have they, there's some exorbitant prices on it and you do get vials so some people actually buy the vials and they they mix it with uh, uh, you know the sprays the nasal sprays that you get which you use for your uh people who use asthma they have a spray so it's a particular liquid that you mix it with so you can dilute to that and you know just use it as a nasal in- inhaler but i mean this all diy and uh you know if you really want that adventurous to get into it and if you think that uh you know your heart health uh you know rebuilding your, yourself from inside you know getting in that you definitely try and uh, you know get a hold of a medical expert uh, or a doctor who can actually prescribe something similar for you uh otherwise uh, you know this is something good to know and this kind of uh, investigation into this kind of a uh, uh, peptide uh, is going to actually you know it's going to grow and uh, why i did this up particularly is because something that's not very common you won't hear about it but 
it is really important to know that this is one peptide i'm talking about there are many other peptides okay and uh, they've got some nice names on it and though you won't really know and won't really realize that it is a peptide so the foods that have peptides and you should always have it uh, somehow in your diet is milk or uh, dairy products definitely have the building blocks for your peptides there and the more naturally or more organic it is that means if the cows are grass fed and the grass is not uh, fertilized artificially you know if they've got more natural fertilizer good soil you know those peptides will slip into your system a lot better or uh, seafood uh, grains soya i think soya is already probably a lot of you have already have it in your diet right now and that also is a extremely good source of peptides now the peptides vary in many in many many cases okay there are many things that you've been using and uh, i think if you do recall that uh, there is something that you use for your skin that's called collagen and collagen is also kind of a peptide and there are many peptides and you'll find them in a lot of food so food is ex- an extremely important uh, source of your longevity and your youth and your vitality and uh, you know starving is definitely not a good thing to do and i tell people you know have your proper meals keep a good gap in between but don't try this fasting because there's a lot that the body needs that you can't see and typically when people uh, run after weight loss they only look at the scale and they only look in the mirror and they only look at you know how you know what's their waist size and uh, you know you try to trigger that saying that if i'm lean and yes definitely not being overweight is a good thing but you need to let the body shed its weight and not do it very artificially because you have to have nutrients and if you have a lack of nutrients it may not surface now but probably 10 or 15 years later it's going to start you know the jigsaw puzzles the pieces are going to be missing and when the body needs it to be too frail to actually build it back again so definitely uh all those who have been following the dynamic vitality model are the ones who are going to have the last laugh in this situation because everyone is going to be trying stunts and they're going to be doing all sorts of funny things uh you know they're going to go into these weird diets or they're going to go into this fasting or anything like that and finally you're the one who's going to be enjoying your food food is meant to be enjoyed it's a happy thing and you guys are going to be actually you know saying ha 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 at the end of it because you would have just enjoyed your life till the very last second that you live and uh, you wouldn't have made too much of sacrifice yes initially it's just a, an adjustment but i don't think you're really sacrificing you're depriving your body of anything so uh if you did enjoy this uh, the session uh, don't forget to comment or uh, you know uh, get back to me in case you want something else to be spoken about